Hello, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. My name is Stacy Horowitz. I'm the operations director at the City of Lakes Community Land Trust in Minneapolis, Minnesota. A few months ago, Hertz and the Community Land Trust of Brussels reached out and wanted to have a conversation about the challenges and the opportunities our organization has had with bringing existing homeowners into our community land trust. The City of Lakes Community Land Trust started in 2002 in Minneapolis. We have now grown to nine staff members and we have over 400 homes in the trust. Over that same time period, we've also served a total of over 525 homeowners, the difference there being the resales of the existing homes. Similar to what was shared around CLTB was we have a standard appraisal-based formula in that existing homeowners or homeowners who are land trust get 25% of any change in market equity at time of sale. Within our organization, we have single family homes, condos, condominiums, excuse me, townhomes, duplexes, and what we refer to as multi-generational homes. It is essentially a single family home with an accessory dwelling unit that is either attached or maybe a separate building, but in connection on the same parcel of land. Within our organization, we are able to bring homes into the land trust through our own construction and rehab of those homes. We also work with a number of developer partners. We have a buyer initiated program, and we also have a seller leveraged program. We have a subsidiary that also acts as a real estate agency for us. The program that we're gonna focus on today is called Project Sustain Legacy. Before launching into the details of Project Sustained Legacy, I wanted to touch on a couple of key terms that you'll hear me say throughout the presentation. One of those is property tax. That is essentially a charge that's levied by a local government and it's paid by owners of the real estate within that jurisdiction. When that property tax is not paid, that real estate will end up in what's called property tax forfeiture. So essentially the state takes ownership of that real property if those property taxes are not paid by the owner. Other jurisdictions also will do code enforcement, which is essentially a penalty that is placed on a property when the owner violates a rule or a standard of condition such as siding falling off or a building kind of leaning to the side. And so there'll be a fee that the city in, um, will put on that property, which then eventually ends up on property taxes. And so you begin to see this process where things are added on to the property taxes and for low income households and vulnerable households that can begin to push them towards forfeiture for uh, a lot of un unaddressed deferred maintenance. The other term that I often use is called affordability investment. And that's essentially the amount of funding a land trust invests in a property to create a perpetual affordable home. And then the last term that you'll probably hear this morning from me is mortgage refinance. <clears throat> And that is when an existing mortgage is refinanced into a new mortgage. Project Sustained Legacy, we started about 14, 15 years ago, and it is focused on longtime lower income homeowners who have usually encountered a hardship resulting from a significant life event. Because of that life event, we often see them in a housing related financial challenge, such as the property tax forfeiture or the mortgage foreclosure, or a significant repair or deferred maintenance of the home. Through Project Sustained Legacy, the CLCLT addresses that financial challenge or that significant rehab, and we do that with the affordability investment. 
In consideration of that investment, the homeowners transfer title of the land to the CLCLT and the home becomes a resale restricted perpetually affordable home. Essentially our process for having a home become part of the land trust through Project Sustained Legacy, it's really an opportunity for an initial conversation with the homeowner and then we request a meeting so that we can better understand the current financial challenges or the debt that somebody may be facing. We really want to get a full picture of what's happening with that homeowner. Similar to how other initial buyers will come into the land trust, we ask that homeowner to complete an application and our program orientation. Once we confirm that the homeowner is income eligible, so even if someone is coming in through Project Sustained Legacy, they still need to meet our income threshold. And then we do a walkthrough of the property so we can determine what the rehab needs are for that particular property. The homeowner is approved into the program. And then we take whatever steps are needed and it can vary by homeowner to take care of that financial challenge if there is one or really identify the degree of rehab that needs to be done. Once all of that is taken care of, the, the homeowner transfers the land to the land trust. We do establish an escrow where the land trust, the homeowner is paying directly to the land trust property taxes, insurance, and the monthly lease fee. And we do that so we have an idea of whether or not the homeowner is going to end up potentially in another financial challenge. And hopefully we can step in early enough to redirect and continue to have the homeowner be successful. And then following the home becoming part of the land trust, we complete the rehab that we've identified and agreed upon with that homeowner. On average, we've done, I would say somewhere around 90 to $100,000 on most of the homes that are in the land trust from a rehab perspective. In addition to that, we also have the affordability investment. Some of the key lessons we've learned from Project Sustained Legacy is probably the most important one is that it is relationship intensive. This really happens at what I refer to as the speed of trust. It's a phrase I've borrowed from someone else a long time ago, but it really truly resonates in this particular program. Building trust between the homeowner and the organization is key. You are asking someone to make a change in probably one of the largest investments they've done in their lifetime. And in most cases, the individuals and the families we've assisted through Project Sustain Legacy have been in their homes for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So this is their home. And it takes time. It takes time to build that trust. And so with that, the organization, the funding sources, and other key partners really have to be patient. This does not happen overnight. And in some cases, we've been in conversation with homeowners for two and three years before the home has become part of the land trust. That requires patient funding sources. So having our funders understand that even though they have deadlines by which they need to spend the dollars or they want us to spend the money, that in some cases, especially working with existing homeowners, we need to make sure that we can do it in a way that makes sure they're respected and that that trust remains in place. For us, that's required strong partnerships, our city, our county, which are local jur government jurisdictions, have been key partners, along with low income, or excuse me, low cost or no cost legal services, because we wanna make sure our homeowners understand the agreement that they're entering into. So there's a number of different elements that need to come into this process to ensure that there's an understanding of what the homeowners agreeing to, both initially, and at time of resale. The other thing we've learned over time is that things change for households. 
So while we do a deep review of their current circumstance, financially, maintenance wise, other resources that they may need, there is oftentimes changes in their household, changes in their income, things that they encounter along the way from the time that they become part of the land trust. And our goal is to keep them in the home. And so we have to figure out what is our role as an organization to ensure that we can support the homeowners throughout their whole journey. To date, we've assisted 15 households, 14 or 15 households through Project Sustained Legacy and all that wanted to remain in the home. So that's 99% <laughs> of those are still in their homes. In one particular situation, it was someone that everybody around and in the situation thought it best that she sell the home to the land trust. And then the final lesson that we have found to be critical is that rehab is essential. So initially, Project Sustain Legacy started more from the housing related financial challenge, really trying to help ensure that someone could stay in their home and we were satisfying that financial challenge. In this process, we've learned that if we don't address the deferred maintenance of the home, the energy efficiency of the home, bring systems up to date, address code issues, safety issues, we're truly not helping someone as holistically as we should be as an organization. There have been situations where we could have stepped in financially, but we did not have the degree of resources to address the, the rehab. And while we could have been a part of the solution, we could not be the only solution. And we've chosen not to necessarily help that homeowner bring them into the land trust. So when you think about working with existing homeowners from our experience is making sure that you're, you have the ability to manage all elements of that relationship and situation. So thank you very much.